So the idea of uh, this, the central idea of actually studying um, this particular unit at level three is to look at two things to understand and assess your academic and uh, research skills at level three. That would mean that what we want to do is identify your key strength areas, your weakness areas. What are the areas you find uh, that you have, um, you know, skills in already, which kind of present opportunities and the areas that you have not yourself um, kind of realized are areas of threat. That means a, a gap areas essentially, which could become potential threats for you as you study further in your uh, career or maybe gain another, you know, a further qualification. Now, after we have done the SWOT analysis, what we're going to be looking at is uh, getting into something called, once we know clearly that, you know, uh, these are my areas which I need to improve or the gap areas that I need to work on, then what we will need to do is identify certain, um, you know, types of training or certain, um, let's put it this way, things that we will have to do by putting together some smart objectives around it and develop it into a, a personal development plan. And that personal development plan would be a working document which you normally use for, you know, 12 to 18 months to try and write down uh, and kind of summarize your current uh, skill set with the current strengths and, you know, the uh, areas that you feel you have, um, you know, good um, knowledge about. And then you also write down the the points or the areas in which you need to gain knowledge, you need to increase your knowledge, or, or as we call it, you need to hone your knowledge in terms of, you know, better your skills and your knowledge. And this document is what we keep updating, you know, for a period of 12 to 18 months till you achieve that, um, uh, you know, just in terms of improvement. So what I'm going to do is, we are going to look at uh, PDP and SWOT in particular, and, that is what I'm going to open up with. <clears throat> and I'll show you two examples just to begin with. So I'm going to try and send you um, this particular, uh, you know, discussion that we're doing today. We'll actually look at covering learning outcome one which is to be able to assess your own academic uh, competence and learning outcome six, which would mean that once we've identified the areas of, you know, um, areas that we need to work on, you know, improve on or gain skills on, how do we look at reflecting our own performance in terms of over the six week, eight week period to try and see if there is a change which has happened or if, you know, we've been able to acquire those skills. There is also something called skills audit that I would ask you to undertake. And I will also show you a bit of a template on that to understand how this audit is, is done. Right, right. Today's session will primarily look at understanding how do we do these things and how do we utilize these documents. So I'm going to show you three documents in particular. Just to summarize again, one will be a SWOT analysis document. The other will be a personal development plan. And the third one will be something called skills audit. Now there are various tests that we can do to kind of understand what is our behavior, you know, the attitude, how you react. And these are various tests that we can also do. And I'll point you in the direction of a few websites wherein you can go in and do these tests. These tests basically look at asking you multiple choice questions. Some of the questions are repetitive and these questions then basically come to some sort of an analysis after they have been answered uh, in terms of arriving at what is your personality type? What are your key strength areas? What are your traits? How you behave in a certain, uh, certain situation? And these tests are done in organizations sometimes when you go and apply for uh, jobs. So when they are recruiting for people to look at or essentially when they're trying to recruit people or staff within the organization and they want to see that whether the person will be able to gel into the culture and the environment of that organization. Sometimes you will see that some organizations end up uh, asking you to do these tests so that they have a better idea in terms of your personality and your qualities that, uh, that they tend to then match with 
the internal set that they have prepared in terms of what type of uh, you know employees they want to recruit or what type of, of qualities do they want in their employees from that particular angle and some of these tests um, you know by the time the documents open up so this, these are called myers brig foundation tests so they are free personality tests that you can do and some of them um, you know essentially are uh, between 10 to 15 questions long take about you know anywhere between 5 to 12 minutes to complete and these then will give you a bit of a, um, a kind of um, you know summary in the background in terms of what shapes up your personality now there are various types so obviously we will look at i'll send you the links which primarily will be looking at you understanding um, by taking this test in terms of what kind of personality you are and uh, what are the skills that personality type has and then if you're looking at uh, developing those skills what are the areas and how would you develop these skills is what we will look at so if you do a quick search uh, you know obviously on personality tests you will normally see a lot of them up but, uh, these were invented by uh, you know obviously two scientists called Myers and Briggs and they are the most uh, you know popular ones which you can end up taking because in most case, most organizations would look at you know, have paid versions of these personality tests at different levels so if they are recruiting somebody at the very uh, basic level uh, in terms of the organization they will have simple tests somebody if they are looking at recruiting at senior management or maybe a ceo in the organization the tests would be very detailed and they will go into or delve into each and every aspect of the personality of the person, the skill set, the knowledge, the experience, and a lot of other uh, such parameters, which when you take some of these tests, uh, you know, uh, give you some idea. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So the, the main thing that we want to look at primarily would be to understand, I know that in the marketing unit, when we were looking at, we looked at some of these models called SWOT and PESTO. Now we have applied these models in particular to uh, you know business situations or uh, you know economic climate, but sometimes we also do our own SWOT analysis and also look at um, you know uh, um, the uh, say for example I I wouldn't say best but we will look at some of these personality tests to try and drill into uh, in terms of finding out what makes us or what makes us tick. And this is where we will start off with the first document. Give me one second. So, Third one we look at is the SWOT. Now, skills audit in particular, you can do it in um, different. Uh, you know different shapes and sizes in terms of you know different qualities and different aspects of uh, you know the audit can be done but I'll show you one in particular um, 
that was done by one of our students earlier. And that's quite pertinent. Yeah. So let's look at some of these documents in a bit more detail. Uh, let's go one by one. Now, what I wanted to do was um, open one up, which is. <clears throat> So here is what we looked at, say, for example, let's start with SWOT, okay? <clears throat> now, here, what I would suggest you look at is, um, from an academic standpoint of view, you're looking at identifying your, so when I send this across to you, what you have to do is parallelly using maybe some sort of bullet points here. You have to identify your strengths. So if I have to ask you this question, what are your strengths? What would you tell me from that aspect? I'd say um, I have patience, I have respect, I have ambition. I'd okay, so that's fine. And that's okay. That's a good start. So let me put this into some sort of working notes uh, just to do this as an exercise while we go along. So when we look at, say, for example, strengths, you know, what we are looking at in particular is um, your qualities, right? So when you think of strength, you think of your qualities, right? Okay. So when we when we think of qualities, you mentioned some of the qualities would be, um, you know, uh, like you are respectful, you know. Um, what else did you mention? Ambition. Um, Okay. What else can you think of? So think of academic qualities uh, that you would kind of qualify or you know put them into uh, strength areas. Um, patience. So I mm -hmm. don't give up easily. Okay. So that would be say if you don't give up easily, that will be persistence. Persistence. Persistence, okay. Persistence is that you keep trying, you keep trying until unless you achieve or you know you're able to kind of you know um, achieve that task or finish that task. Now you would look at qualities like persistence. You would look at qualities if you say patience, for example, you know, uh, which would mean that you are calm and you know composed in situations, which typically uh, you know would kind of disturb other individuals or they might lose their temper and uh, those would be qualified or classified as something called, you know, your strength areas. Now, strength areas are nothing but, you know, abilities that you uh, are able to do effortlessly. It could be because of your physical strength. It could be because of your mental, uh, you know, abilities. And those are things that you will consider primarily as, you know, your strength areas. <coughs> Sorry. So in terms of Think of when you think of uh, you know strengths. Think of physical plus mental abilities. So in terms of when we say persistence, this would you classify as a personal or a mental ability? A mental. Mental ability. That's correct. So patience will also be classified as something called mental ability. That means um, you know you are generally calm and composed. Now can you think of some physical uh, capabilities which will which will primarily be, you know, um, uh, your strength areas. Um, physical. Uh, physical. Think of it from a point of view of, you know, strength areas which people actually highlight, uh, you know, in, in their CVs. Um, I can't think of any, sir. All right, okay. So in this case, for example, when you think of strength areas uh, from a point of view of being physical, what you're looking at is that you are able to, for example, uh, make progress on or, you know, look at, um, let's put it this way, make progress on certain 
sometimes what we have to do is um, let's put it this way i'll give you a situation for example when you have a sports day or you know some sort of an activity uh, happening in the school or you know maybe in a workplace sometimes you will get to see that people uh, you know when they form teams they will form teams from a point of view of choosing their own um, you know uh, kind of choosing support to get into their own team because they need they will feel a uh, feel that this particular person will be able to come in and you know physically aid or be more physically challenging uh, you know will pose a physical challenge in in a situation like this so for example if you look at a situation like tug of war or if you look at a situation where you are playing a match sometimes you need physical abilities which are also counted as strength areas so we in that aspect say that i mean sometimes we do use the word that i'm emotionally quite strong though it means a mental uh, ability that you are emotionally very strong but what you are trying to say is that okay i'm emotionally very strong because i can take any form of news or any form of uh, sad or you know um kind of deal with any sort of situation from that aspect wherein that would be considered as a physical ability rather than just being a mental ability is that okay yeah the other areas would be as if you're participating in a physical activity which could be to do with that you're probably doing some gardening or you're probably helping out you know your elders or maybe somebody like friends and family somebody is moving home for example and you're kind of helping out in terms of uh, you know moving home uh, that would need that they need somebody who's coming in and helping out in terms of uh, you know physical ability of strength area now when you think of weaknesses what do you look at uh, when you think of weaknesses weaknesses um, yeah so the qualities that you don't have yeah it could be the qualities that you don't have so here if i have to look at you know um, certain areas in which you would need uh, development that could be qualities now from an academic point of view sometimes when we list out uh, you know weaknesses we could probably say communication skills uh, you know i have good communication skills but i could always do with improving some of those skills so sometimes when i say i have very good written or spoken communication skills so sometimes in the weakness areas what you say is okay i am good with spoken english but i am not that good with spoken english that means or written in, sorry so spoken english is fine but written english for me needs a bit more uh, you know practicing and obviously i need to perfect that technique so if i have to ask you to write a business letter or a formal application you might be okay in terms of your writing but when it comes to business communication or business writing which is requiring a formal letter or a formal notice that you have to send or a formal email that could be an area wherein you are good on english your skills and vocabulary are fine in terms of speaking and communication but when it comes to writing specifically like a business communication letter or an email that might be an area of weakness that you would want to kind of improve on right so if when we say uh, i have a weakness that would not necessarily mean that all the areas that you look at would be areas in which uh, you'll either be uh, you know very very strong or you'll be very weak in but it could be areas wherein a particular section or a particular type of area might just be considered a, a weakness now when i look at the reason i'm coming back to academic again is see we can do a swot analysis from lots of different aspects one we can do an analysis from a point of view of looking at you know uh, your comparison with somebody else but in some cases here uh, from the context of the unit that we are studying here we want to look at doing a swot analysis from a point of view of academic skills or academic area and the skills that you have within this uh, academic area that means within the study area so here some of the skills could be that we will look at would be things like time management if i have to look at say for example your strength that means time management could be one of your areas of strength that you've given some tasks or given the um, you know situation wherein you have to manage a number of tasks in a particular amount of time you are able to kind of you know manage that and because you are able to manage multitasking well and you are able to do it in a particular time that means you have good time management skills and these time management skills would be if you do it time and again and you are able to complete it on time and this then at some point in time you become very confident with that okay 
you know, given this, if I have to go for a meeting or if I have to meet somebody, I'm always on time or before time, then this is an area of strength. Now, if I have to reverse this and I have to put it this way that, okay, in some cases, if you arrive late on meetings, you arrive late, for example, to the office or to your workplace, something like that, then in that case, this would then become an area of weakness because this is something which is happening time and again over a period of time. And because you're not able to manage it successfully, that means this is an area of improvement. And that is why we call it an area of weakness. So I could also write this particular uh, time management for me could be a strength, could also be a weakness, depending on the situation in which you are evaluating it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Now, in terms of, again, the other things that we could think of would be things like, say, communication. Now, I am very good on, say, spoken uh, English, you know, or you're very good on, for example, uh, you know, written English. But in some cases, when it comes to, say, doing formal uh, writing in terms of business English, I might be, you know, uh, um, you know, I might need help in terms of, understanding the format and the way in which letters are drafted or emails are drafted because it uses a particular vocabulary or text and certain words which kind of emphasize and you know then portray the message so business writing skills could be business writing uh, for, say for example when i say skills not generalizes business writing which would mean say letters and emails is something that i might need you know I'm, this is an area which I might, where I might need to develop my skills. Is that okay? Right. Yeah. That's so, right. so in terms of sometimes when you think of situations wherein uh, we look at what are the other areas which could be skills that we say are strength areas could be things like if you are given a situation and you are able to manage it well, you are able to gel with other colleagues or other people in that situation quite well. You are able to get consensus. So some of these skills would be called, say, organizational uh, uh, skills or, say, planning skills. Right. What is organizational skill? If you're given a plan and you said, OK, um, you know, sometimes what we get to see is I'll give you a recent example of my kids. For example, last week was hard term and they got, um, you know, um, a kind of a note to raise some money for charity. Now, obviously, this was given across to a section of students in the class. The one raising the highest amount of money will get a gold medal. The one raising the second highest would get a silver. And the one raising the third highest would be the bronze. Now, the idea was they were given a very basic understanding of what they have to do. So it was a part of, a, a part of the exercise was to read why the money was being raised, understand the cause, and then go out and seek, uh, you know, uh, charitable donations from people who would kind of, you know, give you some money uh, for raising uh, for this charity. Now, what they had to do was they had to basically understand the situation. After understanding, they had to plan who they will approach so that they can get that charity and or donation coming in. And that required a bit of organizational and planning skill. So sometimes you're given tasks in the office or, you know, when you're at your place of work, Sometimes uh, your boss or your manager would say, can you do this? Can you do that? And you get very little guidance to be able to do uh, what is required or what is not required to be done. But then you put together a plan yourself and that plan that you put together, uh, you know, you go through a certain number of steps to make sure that you reach the end objective or achieve the goal requires you to do some planning. And those would be considered if you're able to do this in lots of situations. And that would mean that you are able to kind of, you know, plan it well and get to the end result, that means you have good planning skills. Is that okay? All right, that's fine. So here, what we want to be able to look at is um, areas, say for example, sometimes you say I'm flexible and adaptable. Now, what I'm giving you here is an example of some of the strength areas which are professional and some of them are personal. So here what we're talking about is strengths which could be treated as professional traits or strengths which could be treated as personal traits. That means time management is more or less required when you work at a place, you go to an office. So here, if your time management is good, it's considered to be a professional skill that you have and that if you're able to manage time, 
come complete your work you know plan it well and then achieve the goals you generally are seem seeming to say you you can generally assume that you have good time management skills so this will be considered a professional skill under strength area but when i say i have i am flexible and i am adaptable that would mean this is more or less related to your personality and here is where you are able to work with all types of people or coming from different types of background and here because of your adaptable nature you are having an area of strength which is adaptability but that becomes a personal area of strength or a can be classified as a personal trait but under the strength um, area do you see the difference yeah yeah so here the idea would be to try and do a swot analysis about yourself and think of your strength areas from both professional traits as well as personal traits now if i have to give you and ask you a question how would you classify problem solving um, uh, as a area in terms of what would you say is this a personal or a professional trait that we are looking at professional right that's correct so problem solving would mean that if you um, are given a set of uh, constraints to work with um, you are able to work out solutions to that particular problem and still achieve the objective so if you are able to do this time and again in in your in your daily routine or in your job then in general you can say or safely assume that you have uh, problem solving solving skills and they seem to be a strength area with you because without much supervision or without much guidance you are able to come to solutions for problems or things which are issues um, you know at the workplace now other areas so there are there are some other areas that you can think of and these areas could be say for example teamwork you know it could also mean that you are dependable sometimes people say that he is more he is he is reliable he is dependable or she is reliable she is dependable and again this is an example of a personal trait but again can be considered as strength areas because your colleagues when they work with you or you work within a team they can depend on you because you can look after them in terms of you know in terms of you know if the work has to be achieved or has to be completed sometimes if somebody is lagging behind then you are able to step in and you know you're able to give provide that helping hand so that the entire team goes through uh, as against uh, you know somebody getting left behind so these are areas that you will classify primarily as you know something called self um, uh, areas which could be personal or professional but would be classified as you know i would say um, classified as something called uh, strength areas now other things that you could look at which i would suggest just to put some words uh, and give you some idea would be things like discipline when we talked about persistent um, you know in in particular uh, when when we when we talked about this particular trait this could be you know a um, uh, personal trait it could be resilient you know which means that you are um, you know if you're faced with adversity uh, you do not face uh, you know you kind of do not turn your face away or you know you kind of face the uh, you know face the situation and try and come out fighting or you know try and deal with it you could also look at skills like persuasive that means you are able to persuade people to 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 be able to come along with you there are things like integrity as we talk about that you know this person is loyal is quite um, you know um, has an integrity in terms of the character and this could be a personal area of strength but it is a personal trait but again and considered under a strength area so these are all things that you'll have to list down under the swot analysis by thinking carefully about what could be your strength areas and divide them into professional and personal so list out at least five professional traits under strength and five personal traits under the strength area is that okay yes now similarly when we look at you know weaknesses how do we look at say defining weaknesses so if i if i look at weaknesses in this case would be you know um uh, things like um, um just give me one second so things like 
So when I look at weaknesses, weaknesses could be, you know, areas that you look at in particular, um, which would mean that, you know, the, just give me one second, um, Kasim, I need to take this call here. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, Ekta, how are you doing? You okay? Sure. No. Matthew Parkin is something that we don't need that urgently because I think the others at level seven are the ones that we need to submit to university today. Sure. I think if it's a PDF, it, it must be all, but you might only be able to see one maybe on the phone or something. Sure. No, no, he mentioned that to me. He said that I will pass it on to Hector and then he will email it to you. So uh, I need them by, by four or before four, to be honest, to be able to pass them on to the university. Really appreciate this, Hector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. <coughs> Sorry about this, Kasim. <clears throat> I had a call from the awarding body, so um, that, that was it. No. Now, in the in the weakness areas, what we're primarily going to look at is basically areas that we um, you know look at, um, which are areas or traits that we look at for development. Now, sometimes uh, given I've given you a brief example, Hing says that um, when we look at um, you know speaking, for example, communication, for example, sometimes what you do is you do not, um, you are in a situation wherein you're not able to communicate well, or you are in general, you know, communicating well with colleagues or peers who are at the same level, but when it comes to communication to senior management, you're not able to communicate well because you do not have the experience to be able to communicate or, you know, speak to uh, maybe somebody senior enough in the management. Now, those then could be areas which sometimes you consider as areas uh, wherein you need improvement or you need to look at improving and these areas would be classified under areas uh, which are called primarily weakness areas is that okay so my suggestion to you would be here when we look at um you know weakness areas in particular we can there are two ways of looking at it one is we can look at you know some of these areas that we see here on the strength side could be listed um you know in the in the opposite side from a point of view of uh, you know weakness and in some cases uh, this is something that could be looked at uh, you know entirely differently so give me um, give me a minute so for example let's look at when i say formal writing or let's look at business writing in this case specifically letters and emails in terms of how do we write business uh, you know communication could be an area which you need improvement on some of the other areas that you could look at um, from your point of view, what can you think of areas which will be areas of improvement? Um, overall? Yeah, overall. Uh, I'm, I'm not dedicated enough. Okay, that's fine. So again, within this, what I would suggest is you could have some personal uh, traits which could be you know uh, areas of um, you know weakness and some could be professional traits so when you say not dedicated enough would be you know probably looking at personal traits in particular what can you think of professional traits professional traits um, my communication skills okay so here we could generally write say communication skills, people would also look at say the use of, say for example, IT. It could be that um, you're good with Windows 7, good with Windows XP, or maybe very good with tablets and things like that. But you might need some professional training on using say MS Word, Microsoft Word. So in Microsoft Word, I could say that, okay, man, one of my areas that I want to look at is how do you mail merge? You know, when you send across the same communication to a number of people, using a facility in Word called MailWords or the use of macros as we call it, which allows you to automate certain things that you're doing in uh, you know, your Word documentation. 
uh, would be an area of uh, you know uh, weakness that means that is an area that you want to develop going further as you start to work with you know microsoft word as a software and start to use the advanced features of the software now some of the other things that we look at in in weaknesses could also be termed as you know um, areas wherein if improved on they can then uh, you know become opportunities now when i look at that here some of the um um so one of the examples that i would give out primarily would be looking at if i had say for example you're applying for a job and you're able to you you come to the interview and all they in the interview basically say okay i think you've got the right experience you fit all the required descriptions uh, and the qualities which are required in the job but if you had this particular qualification you know we would have taken you on pretty much uh, straight up front or you know uh, given you an offer but because you do not seem to be having this qualification and also prior experience uh, this is something we will not be able to take uh, and you know we will have we will have to ask you to uh, you know kind of we'll have to decline you as a candidate now this in particular means that if you had that qualification which was required to meet the criteria for the job you would have had that job in terms of being successful so here opportunities would be classified as um um you know um opportunities would be classified as i would say areas if you can improve then they can make a significant change in your situation so an example would be that if i had say a certificate in leadership for example at level you know say certificate in leadership forget the label now if i had that certificate in leadership i could have been selected as a team leader for this particular role so having that certificate in leadership gives you the opportunity to catapult your career from being a team member to a team leader and that presents an opportunity so here the opportunity is that if i had uh, education or uh, say for example a particular certification for this area that would have meant that i could have made this into uh, you know this would be classified as not as a weakness but as an opportunity so assuming uh, i can complete this education or achieve this certification in the future i have lots of opportunities that i can apply for this position do you see the difference between the weakness and the opportunity yeah definitely so 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 weakness here is basically looking at um you know an area which will take a period of time or an amount uh, in weeks and months for you to be able to uh, achieve that uh, particular skill and that would then become a strength area and after that going forward you'll be able to utilize it in any shape or way possible <laughs> an opportunity would mean that if you are able to get hold of that um you know or if you had that particular qualification or had that particular skill that would pretty much give you an instant um uh, you know uh, ability to be able to jump into a particular position all right is that okay yeah that's perfectly fine Just one second. Let me just text him. So here, my suggestion to you would be: when I, when I, um, when I send you this particular template, what you have to do is basically look at identifying your areas. in terms of uh, inner strengths and uh, you know weaknesses and opportunities and threats now in terms of when i look at opportunities um in particular these will be areas which will basically give you a significant rise or a boost in your current situation provided you have them so they is this is something which can be achieved over a short period of time and once achieved would then allow you to you know kind of start applying for uh, different positions or maybe get a raise in salary or you know get a better uh, job or or a promotion 
and those would be classified as opportunities. Now, a simple example that I would give you is sometimes when you say that, okay, you know, I can get better job opportunities if I try and apply in the Middle East, for example. Now, the reason why people say that is because they feel the experience that they have is relevant here, but is also relevant on, uh, in other geographies. And because the skills that they've acquired over a pointed time become transferable, they then present opportunities for them to be able to, um, you know, seek higher compensation or higher wages in a particular, um, uh, you know, uh, situation. And those would be then classified as opportunities from that side. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Now let's look at understanding threat areas. Now, when we look at in particular areas which are threats, what are your threats? What do you perceive as threats? What do you say or when, what does uh, come to your mind when you think of, uh, you know, when I think of the word threat, just as the word itself in terms of its definition? Something that can be a danger to you. That That is correct. So basically, threat would be a definition wise, if I look at it, basically means there's a statement or an intent to cause harm or cause pain or, you know, some sort of an injury. Now, sometimes you get to see in personal situations is that, you know, people, when they become angry or become agitated, they basically then react and say, okay, um, you know, if you come any closer, I'm going to hit you. So they are basically making you aware of a situation that it's come to such an alarming level that at some stage they have an intention or an intent to stop you from further proceeding by, you know, threatening you. So threats essentially would mean that these are areas wherein you can feel personally when I look at, uh, you know, the SWOT analysis, threats to you would mean that personally here, these are things which can cause damage, uh, which can, you know, or have the ability to cause some sort of a damage, um, you know, from a point of view of either a particular situation, like a job situation, personal situation. And those are the areas that we need to identify as areas of threat. So sticking to the theme of education and job, if I look at a threat area, the one of the threat areas could be that, okay, um, given the time frame, for example, you're doing a job and your employer has asked you to complete an education or uh, say, for example, a particular certification. Now, if you're not able to complete that certification or achieve that certification in terms of qualification, you see this as a threat area, which means you're, you could be losing your job. Right. So when we see people working within project management or within construction site, sometimes you get to see that uh, they take on a lot of people. But what they do say is that subject to you completing this training, your job or your contract would be renewed for another three months. Now, that means why they, when they say subject to you completing is indirectly uh, in a very subtle way, employing to you that you do not have this particular qualification and you need to be able to complete this in the next three months should you wish your contract to be you know, renewed. So this is then perceived as an area of threat is that if I do not have that qualification with me in the next three months, then in that case, what will happen is that I will not have a renewal of my contract and that would mean that I might end up losing my job. Correct? All right. Is that clear enough? Yeah, so these are areas which you can perceive as areas of threat. That means, that means I, they have the potential to cause harm or, you know, kind of say, um, when I say harm, it could be injury or, you know, looking at, um, slowing down the process say for example when i say slowing down the process it could be the, you know you are if you are look if you are in line or due for a promotion provided you do not have that qualification it might slow down the process in terms of you being promoted or getting a salary rise you know something like that right yeah so here is what we need to look at is let's identify you know certain areas which are um, le let's say threat uh, areas, uh, you know, from a point of view of your CV. Now, are there any areas in your CV that you have, you have put in uh, from a point of view of areas that you have no knowledge in 
or are kind of unknown to you? Um, no, I don't think so. Right, okay. So let me give you some, uh, you know, ideas on that side. Now, if you are trying to apply for a job and that job basically says uh, or is asking for a particular type of, say, qualification, and if you do not have that qualification, that means you would you try and apply for the job? Would you try and you know not apply for the job? What would you do? You're not going to apply for it because you can't. You won't do the job then. Correct. So this is something which is uncontrollable, you know, uh, factor when you are applying for that job. That means this is beyond your control. Now either you have that qualification or you do not have that qualification. And the reason why this is uncontrollable is this is external to you. That means this is something that you do not have control on, right? right so yeah. here, the external factor which kind of deters you from applying for that job because they put down that you need a minimum of a merit in the degree to be able to apply for this job or this particular qualification uh, you need to have to be able to meet the criteria before you apply for the job is then considered as a as a as a threat. Right now, sometimes you will also see that um, when we use the word external, so anything which is not within your control will be classified as an area of threat when you do your SWOT analysis. So things like changing market situation. Now you're doing currently a course in business, but suddenly you find that there is a lot of demand for health and social care, IT and other things. Then this is changing, not overnight, but this is changing because the market is changing and this is something which is external to you uh, than being internal or within your control. And that is why it will be classified as a threat. Sometimes we would say that in the job interviews or in other places, they classify that if you're applying for, for example, a IT job, they would say that you need to have knowledge of say Python or Visual C as a programming language. Now, if you do not know programming and you do not know these languages, you might know other languages, but you might not know these two languages, then these will be considered as, you know, uh, threats to you because these are technological things which has been have been put in, you know, technological or technological things which have been put in into the job specification, which you do not have control on, you know, technological specs. So this is considered, say, for example, a threat in terms of uh, in, 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 in your case, when we look at professionally, that you are, you do not have this particular competency. And because you do not have this particular competency, this is considered as a threat area. So what we generalize, what I'm trying to come to is what, when we put threats across, what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at areas which are external to you, which are beyond your control and which can affect not just you, but can also affect others because of the uh, nature of uh, you know the requirement for that particular job role is that okay yeah, that the, that does not necessarily mean that this is a gap area within your personality or your skills or your knowledge but this is something which is mandatory as a requirement uh, you know uh, required for that particular role and this would not just apply to you but can also apply to others because this is considered uh, an area which is external and beyond your control. Okay. Right. Yeah. We could also put things like sometimes you see, uh, again, continuing with the theme of, uh, you know, employment, sometimes you get to see that there are two companies and the companies are merging. So, for example, Booker's Wholesale in the recent couple of months has been acquired by Tesco. Now, there's a lot of reshuffling which will happen because they would want to make savings to some redundancies which will happen within the companies because some on both sides, there'll be some set of people which will be doing the same roles. And what they would want to do is basically narrow down on people to make some savings. And that, that would mean redundancies. Now, whether that's, whether, which side of, uh, you know, um, let's put it this way, which people will become redundant, whether they'll be on Tesco side or on Booker's Wholesale side, will depend on the competencies those people have and that comp those competencies will have to be judged by HR through a process and they will then look at people who do not have those competencies to be made redundant. Now, 
if then somebody is looking at doing that um, uh, you know analysis they would then look at people who have the right qualities the traits and obviously the skill set which going further would um, uh, you know would be beneficial would be the ones which will be retained uh, and the others would primarily mean that you know um, the, they they would primarily stay on because they have qualities which primarily uh, are required in the changed uh, side of the company or changed side of the operations and they would then tend to have uh, more strengths and uh, more qualities or skills which are considered as strength areas opportunity areas as against weakness or weak threat areas the ones which they feel will not have qualities or requirements of those skills going further would be put into a redundancy list and that area because it's external to the person's experience and the decision making that they are uh, uh, going to follow would be considered as as threats is that okay yeah that's fine so i think in the first instant my session to you would be i would suggest that uh, for today um, basically look at uh, when i send you this particular sheet i'm going to save this uh, and send this to you is to look at doing some swot analysis on on yourself um with regards to your you know personality and look at understanding um you know how this can be done uh, from a point of view of uh, some of the skills uh, that you have or some of the experience that you have with you in 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 yourself now the other thing that we will look at is very briefly um there's a skills audit which i would say that you could uh, that you could do now a skill audit is something uh, which is to look at getting some feedback from others about your abilities so here you could look at a number of abilities now this is a template but what i'm going to do is basically show you some which a student has previously done now what he did was he looked at certain areas where he wanted to get some feedback on his communication skills only the key area that has been chosen is just the communication skills or which directly relates to his personality and in this what he did was he chose certain areas like body language tone of voice delivery of voice facial expressions and use of ICT or use of technology and in that he invited his colleagues to rate him on a four rating kind of a scale like poor average good or expert so i am i an expert in the use of it and then they rated him on the basis of what they thought was uh, the skill level or the competence of that person so this can be done uh, you know obviously i would suggest that you kind of make something up and then maybe ask some of your friends and you know family members to rate you on and this is an area that you want to take a bit of feedback and this feedback will be called something called a skills audit where you are going to be benchmarked or you are going to be given certain points by people who know you and then in those areas they will do a bit of ranking or rating for you to see that this is where you stand according to their uh, you know understanding and this typically is something called a skills audit is that okay now you could choose the areas that you want to choose it could be anything from you know um, uh, areas in terms of it for example you could choose some of the areas which are your strength areas your weakness areas your opportunity in your threat areas and ask them to rank or give you some you know kind of a score on that to see what is what they perceive of you in 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 those areas which you classify as strength or weaknesses or opportunities or threats is that okay yeah that's fine so i'm going to try and send you this particular template as well just to have a look so that you know what are the areas that you would want to kind of look at as a template and then draft something of your own to get some feedback from others about your skill areas okay the word skills audit when i when i look at the word skills audit itself you know it gives the meaning away that you're trying to seek some sort of a feedback on your skills from others and this could be any sort of skills that you want to look at sometimes people you know um they look at um basically 
this is a process to identify gap areas in particular. So when you look at, say, for example, you want to identify your weaknesses or in particular areas that you need to develop or improve on, then sometimes people will end up doing a skills audit. And what they will do is they will kind of give this out as a bit of a survey, which their colleagues, peers, or, you know, um, near dear ones could actually fill up and then provide it back. And then you tabulate it and then you find out, okay, according to say five people I've given, three of them felt that, you know, my use of IT is excellent. So I have good knowledge about, you know, tablets, computers, and IT. So you don't put the specifics down, but you know, you, you can drill into specifics also, depending on what kind of, how much detailed feedback you want or how much detailed, uh, you know, um, um, kind of reference point you want from others when they rate you on your, on your skills. So skills audits is nothing but it's a process through which you kind of look at identifying your gap areas. And this is normally a technique which is used by, uh, you know, people within organizations or when you work within a particular role within a company or a business or an organization. And the outcome of this allows you to essentially put this into some sort of a plan for training and development. So you will see within organizations, the HR department normally does this uh, audit by sending across surveys and you know questionnaires to the employees at the end of the year. And what they look at is they try and gauge the level of skills which the employees have to be able to perform effectively in that job or that job role. And basis that what they do is they, because some of these in the background have uh, what do you call some sort of numbering and basis the numbering the, or the score that you get, the HR department then tailors training and development for you for specific programs so that you can improve on some of these gap areas and build on skills which will help you effectively work in your role. Is that okay? So this, this is a very important technique and this can be put, uh, put to use in various situations. And sometimes you will see that within organizations as an example would be that um, a lot of colleagues uh, who work together in a particular, um, uh, say, a particular role or a department like sales would say that this person is very aggressive. Now, why does everybody say that this person is quite aggressive in its tone or it's in, in, in the behavior is that they perceive that in situations when there is a discussion, brainstorm, or in general, a get together happening, the person tries to assume, you know, a dominant position and does not allow others to, for example, contribute or, you know, speak in that uh, discussion. Now, that is where they feel that the person is aggressive, but the HR department, in order to confirm that notion or that opinion, will do a skills audit or maybe some sort of an audit through which this will be, as of now, which is maybe more or less an impression that everybody carries, but in order for that impression to be confirmed into some sort of a finding, they will do some sort of an audit amongst the peers and the employees in that department to find out if that is something true or not. And this can be done through the process of something called audit. Is that okay? And in, in the case, if you're trying to find out about the skills, it will become a skills audit. If I give you an example of accounting, for example, at the end of the year, uh, you know, HMRC might come in and check the accounts of a particular company or, uh, you know, an accounts manager in a particular department where I might ask for, uh, you know, the budget and expenditure from a particular department like marketing and sales. This would then constitute an audit that they want to do. They want to reconcile, look at how much has been spent, how much has been, uh, you know, uh, spent where, and whether that has led to any justifiable increase in terms of sales or output would be considered a accounting audit or a marketing audit or a sales audit. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. So I think what we want to do is basically look at these two templates, which I'm going to send to you to try and understand and do your SWOT analysis for today and also look at doing a bit of skills audit to find out what are the areas um, uh, and how you rate in these areas uh, with regards to, you know, uh, maybe your near dear ones and your family. Right, right, right. Right? And then finally, we will do is we will get into something called, when I look at reviewing this, and I make a plan to kind of develop this going further. 
So I want to kind of look at, okay, there are some areas which would have, say for example, after the skills audit I've done, after the SWOT analysis I've done, there are some areas which come out to be weakness areas, areas like I need maybe more development on communication or write business writing skills, for example, I need development or uh, you know increase my knowledge on negotiation, for example, some of the skill areas which I, uh, which 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 I require definitely when I get into a job, but these are areas that I need development on. These areas will these areas of weakness or these areas of opportunities will actually then be converted into something called smart goals. And smart is a word or an acronym that we will get to use quite often. So smart basically stands for you know um, an acronym which is so when I look at specific, you look at measurable, look at um, achievable, R stands for realistic, and T stands for time bound. Now, most of all, you will get to hear this term time and again when you work within an organization, even when you study up in, uh, you know, uh, in, in the courses at level four or five, you'll always see that your teachers, your tutors, your boss, you know, wherever, whatever place of work you work in, they always ask you to set something called smart objectives. The smart objectives are objectives which primarily are looking at, you know, you being able to set objectives which, which are specific, so not too generic. Like if I say I want to, you know, you can have objectives on personal and professional front. Now on the personal front, you say, okay, I want to, just as an example, a lot of people made new year resolutions, uh, you know, when we had the new year a couple of weeks back, a lot of them made resolutions that they will stop drinking tea or not have tea or reduce weight and things like that. But when they say stop drinking tea, or, uh, you know, not have this or not have that, or basically say reduce weight, this all seems quite generic because they haven't specified from where to where uh, you know they will do. So if you're looking at reducing weight, you're not you've not defined what your current weight is, and you will bring it down by how much. If you say I'm going to stop drinking tea, that means you have four cups of tea a day or five cups. How much are you going to reduce in terms of consumption? Some of them say that sometimes okay, I will start jogging or you know I'll do this, but just an idea in terms of these objectives being very generic because they have not specified something called a starting point or an end point. Is that okay? So when you say your objectives have to be specific, that means we have to define them uh, well so we know what is the start and what is the end point. Similarly, we look at measurability, we look at achievability, realistic and time bound. Now, I'm going to stop drinking tea. That's fine. You're going to stop drinking. But over a what period of time? You know? Is it, is it going to be immediately? Is it going to from tomorrow? Is it going to be slowly or gradual reduction? So those are things that you have to define when we talk about SMART. Now, the areas which are weakness areas and areas which are threat areas would then be classified into something called SMART objectives, and they will be brought together something onto a plan called personal development plan. And this is where you're making a review document which will help you review it every quarter, every three months, every six months, every year to see what kind of progress you're making. And here is where what you will do is you will say, what do I need to do or what I need to learn and why do I need to learn? So you need to define this in this column. So here, if you say that I want to learn, uh, I want to improve my communication skills, but you have to define why do you want to improve your communication skills and in what area you want to improve your communication skills once you've done that it then you have to drill it further and say what will it help me achieve so having better business writing skills would mean that i would be able to do one two three four things right now some of some after you've done that what you identify is what are the resources you need to achieve that do you need to attend any classes? Do you need to buy any books? Do you need to do any, uh, you know, um, studies for that? And if you have to show improvement, what are the basic things which will help you improve that will have to be listed here. And at some stage, what will happen is you will have to define how will you measure the success criteria. That means if you're achieving that, then why have you achieved it or how you're achieving it? 
you know is it outside of work are you putting in some additional time for this have you set aside some time for this and then you put some sort of a target date towards the end the target date would mean that okay if i've started this to make it time bound as an activity i need to be able to achieve it by such and such such and such date and that would help you to have something in front of you as a benchmark that i'm going to start this activity i'm going to end it here and this is the time frame in which you have to end it and then you do a backward planning which will allow you to fill all these tasks in columns in essentially is that okay so i think let's start off with these three documents for today uh, to understand and do a swot analysis to do a skills audit and in the next session what we're going to do is try and revisit once you have emailed your swot to me and your uh, skills audit to me what we will do is try and put that into some sort of a pdp or a personal development plan all right is that okay yeah that's fine stop so there are um, and apart from that what i'm going to do is as i mentioned to you i'm going to send you two links for these tests so my suggestion is when you do these tests take a screenshot of it which we will put in the assigned because these are tests that you are doing to understand your personality your gap areas your weakness areas and those are things that we will use to put into uh, you know the actual assignment that we do okay so in this case we'll look at develop a plan to show how targets will be achieved we are looking at utilizing something called smart as a terminology to try and define our targets uh, from the swot which are weakness areas and how do we develop them develop the weaknesses into areas of strength or opportunities will be actually the smart plan that we will put together and that will address your merit task okay all right right so uh, let me send this to you uh, on the email after the session and then what we will do is uh, we will catch up on a bit of recap to see what was your results what were your results of the personality test that you have done and also uh, try and then develop your swot and your skills audit and use that as a uh, starting point to create a pdp right. okay brilliant any questions on this amount so far um no uh, no you've explained it good so far sir uh, no questions good stuff i will mike mark your assignment this week and then we'll send you a final grade on the email i think you've sent me a revision already so i will get that boxed in between today and tomorrow and then send over a final grade for you for that assignment great great good stuff so i will catch up with you i've sent you a couple of invites for this particular unit so we'll catch up on tuesdays at 3 o'clock um and then uh, conduct this session so that we can try and bring it to some sort of a closure within the month of march itself that's great okay and some reading material i will i don't know i'm not seen moodle right now but i'm going to try and email you the reading material along with the links and these templates <laughs> and if there is nothing on the moodle then i will uh, upload some of the stuff that i'm sending you on email so that you have it as a reference material for uh, you know your self study as well right right that's great Good stuff. Thanks for joining in the session, Aman, and I will catch up with you next week. All right. Thank you very much, Pai, sir. Okay. Take care.